Hey, 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 it's your girl Unique Speaks. I'm over here talking about what I'm talking about because that's what your girl is all about. So welcome in to this beautiful series where we are about to see what God says through Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinthia of what are some things that we are not going that will hinder us, you know what I'm saying, from getting into the kingdom of God. And so I'm excited to bring this truth, okay? And I'm going to make that very, very clear. I'm excited to bring this truth because with without this truth and without getting some of these things out, there's many of us are going to keep on moving in ways that is going to keep us from heaven. And I'm just so grateful that God you know, chose me and, you know, and that I'm able to help someone somewhere. So I want to just go ahead and dive on into the word. I hope you're ready because this conversation can get intense because God has already prepared me for those who are just not going to want to hear it and they're just not going to believe it. But this is the reason why I like to place the scriptures on the screen so you can read along with me, whether you want to read a different translation and you do the, you do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I just want you to know the truth so you could begin to live the life that God created you to live. You feel me? Let's go. All right. First Corinthians six, nine through 10 is going to be the foundation of this entire series. So I will be reading it every time I post a video on this series in the beginning. Okay. So let's go ahead. It's in verse nine. It says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are the thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And I just want to make that very, very clear. But I also want to go ahead and add in verse 11 right here because you could be one of those who have been delivered from here. And I just want you to know that God has you in mind all the time and we are so needed in this season so we can help one another to know like, hey, if you know, like we don't know everybody's business, but we have to be bold and courageous enough to speak the truth so more souls can be saved. OK, just like you, because you are a number 11 where it says some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. All right. So I just wanted to go ahead and set the foundation of what this series is all about. And I want to be able to combat the manipulation that has been spewing across the nation. OK, this ain't just for my hometown. This ain't just for my household, although it includes all of us. Because at the end of the day, no one is exempt. You know, you're right. You can just get away with this and, and you just think you're going to make it in. God, God definitely sticks to his word. So I want to go ahead and just put this disclaimer in the book of Genesis where God began to speak about man and woman. And when he said when man leaves his mother and his father that he will cleave to his wife and they will become one in the spirit. And now, and I love that verse because it just shows us even the more that how they become one is when they connect sexually. And when they connect sexually, now their spirits are intertwined and they have now sealed a covenant that they have made with God to be husband and wife and to tarry alongside each other honoring God through their marriage as well through their individual lives so marriage is not for everybody because you carry that load right along with you so I want to talk about what Satan has done he has manipulated a lot of the the understanding of that because we have many of us and I was one of them okay moving in such a promiscuous way all right so many times I know that I don't know who's looking at me and then even the time when my first daughter was born she had to see a lot of different things you know I can only imagine what she gathered from it and so we have to be careful how we moving because today we can see that people feel like it's just okay seem like they survive and seem like they thrive and seem like God blessing them so anything don't see nothing wrong with this and and even the more that now we got social media you know what i'm saying now we got social media that is now showing us so many different illustrations of how we can just have sex before marriage just so we can make sure everything's good you know let's go ahead and test these waters before i put that ring on it 
whew, we're going against the grain so much. So I want to talk about that on some ways that um, the enemy also has manipulated that and how he has planted some of these weeds in our life. And I ain't going to be able to cover all of them, but I'm going to mention four of them that was very close to me that I just felt like I can relate to. And I just want to bring it to you and maybe you can relate with it too. So the enemy has used these things to manip manipulate our reality, okay, mentally. And that is through rape and molestation. If you already know about me, you already know that I, I share my testimony in a heartbeat. I know Oh, I am redeemed by the Lord. I do know what Jesus done for me on the cross. And I decided to follow him and only him. And that is exactly what I am trying to do every single day of my life. But that did happen to me. And my entire reality of what sex really, really meant was completely distorted from that moment. And I'm not alone. I know. I also want to talk about it seemed to be um, it seemed to not be a bad thing or so many are doing it um, and they're fine. So that's what I was stating before. Like, you know, it just is so just easily flaunted around and it's on movies, it's on TV shows, it's in music. And if we are not governing our eye gates and ear gates, we are literally creating a reality that God did not intend for us. Misinterpreted teaching from a non-believer or a blind person and I mean someone who think they know the word but don't know it at all like they literally feel like well look at me I seem to be doing okay but just sooner or later you probably want to clean that up no don't know sooner or later you need to do that right now like we don't even know that God has been trying to block a lot of spirits out of us and and we're gonna get into it even the more but we don't know that and if it's not taught properly we're not going to comprehend it what you're really trying to say well I really want you to comprehend what I'm trying to tell you right now that you will not inherit the kingdom of God if you continue to indulge in activities such as this. Sex outside of marriage was not intended for believers of Christ. And we must know that this is the truth. Okay? Now, even the more of knowing it, that, that is the truth. That's the way we should be living. But now, even on top of that, I'm not even going to inherit the kingdom of God. I'm out here trying to do all these good deeds. And that's not even going to keep you safe. It is how you're living and God is going to judge that heart. And it's the sin that separates us from him in the first place. The last thing I want to tap into is satisfying pleasures. It feels good. Premature sex, premature sex before marriage. I'm telling you, you're going to feel those those pleasures you're going to get the feeling that everybody else feel when they have sex you understand what i'm saying and you're going to want to cre recreate that all the time and what we don't realize is that that creates in us to have this high sex drive next thing you know you with tom dick and harry or you with heather mary and lisa you wondering why you got all these different personalities and you got things that just get on your nerves or triggers you it's because now you have intertwined yourself when god says when spirits become one you put it together. I hope you can comprehend where I'm coming from. I want to go even further. I want to talk about how also in other ways that it has been misinterpreted because it comes from our emotions. Now, our emotions are, are coming from the, like I said, movies, shows, and, and music, you know, how we just love how it makes us feel. And then we start to see in the videos how they, you know, they seem like they're all in love and it's just so romantic and it's so what, what? Whew. The manipulation is real. And so I want to talk about three of those of those traits that we now see sex before marriage. We see it as expressing love. We feel like that, you know, I love you. And in, in order for me to show you that I love you, that I now got to give you my body. And that is the first mistake as well. Because God has already shown us what he has done to show how much he loves us. When he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins, it had nothing to do with sexual pleasures at all. To show how much he loved you. He was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for your life. So you could live life and live it in a better way. You don't have to keep going down that way and trying to you know express your love in such a way that's just 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 really bringing you more harm than anything the number two is feeling desired by others this is one of the ones that i know for myself that was very very you know strong in the inside of me because because of my reality being shifted at such a young age that i began to move in a way where i wanted to be desired by guys or boys or whatever the case may be because i didn't want to be that girl without a boyfriend or i didn't want to be lonely or i wanted to experience what other people were experiencing and the only way that i knew that i can capture someone is 
to use my body so they could desire me even the more. Huh. But once I, I definitely quickly found out that they don't stick around for that either. You know what I'm saying? And there was a lot of people that find themselves, you know, running this way. So it is what it is. But I just thank God for keeping me because that mind is not a, a safe mind to be at. Not at all. Number three is to escalate the depth of the relationship. Now we feel like, oh, hey, we're about to take the relationship to the next level. We're boyfriend and girlfriend. We are falling in love and we're doing all these other things together. And so we feel like the only thing that's missing is to have having sex, you know? And so we really feel like that's the next step for us to seal the deal of this relationship. Now, if you really want to seal the deal to that relationship, then you just get married. Because you don't realize that you're having sex with this person. And if you don't know that you're able to take on all their baggages and shortcomings and flaws and stuff like that, you've opened up a can of worms for yourself in so many different ways. Like I said, not only are we are doing something to someone else, you know what I'm saying? Because they got their own sin to deal with. But we're doing this to ourselves. We're making this life that God called us to, to live more abundantly and more smoothly as much as possible because we got, already got suffers and pains and tribulations that comes in this life already. Now, once we involve the different spirits that come in inside of us, it just makes it hard. But there's so many of us where we, we feel like we got to take the relationship to the next level and that's what it looks like. But the next level to a boyfriend and girlfriend, dating, courting, whatever you want to call it, is marriage. That's why we should be dating with the intent to marriage. And Lord, y'all already know I'm, what I'm going to say. Man, I wish I knew all of these things way before time. I really wish that it was broken down to me at a very young age where I would have been able to get ahead of a lot of the things and mistakes that I made in my, my early 20s and, you know, right at my early 30s. I'm going to list some scriptures here that is going to help guide you even the more into this thought process, because that is exactly why this series is being put out. I want to trigger the mind. I want to challenge your salvation. I want you to challenge your own salvation, because at the end of the day, nobody has a heaven or hell to put us in, and you don't have to bring no confession here to be saved. Your confession goes to God, and you believe that you have been moving around and indulging in sex in such an immoral way that is against and contrary to the word of God, this is your moment to repent. This is a clear indication that you didn't know. And now you know. Now you have the information that has been holding back blessings, that have been holding back things that God said your name is on. But again, this is not about just the blessings of materialistic things. We're talking about spiritual blessings that will put you into a position where you're able to be used by God for his glory, not yours. You know what I'm saying? And that is a beautiful thing once you once you tap into it and you begin to flow in those things of God. And at the end of the day, that's what our lives are all about. But this world has truly tripped us up mentally. So the first scripture I want to bring to us is 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, one through 40. Yes, it's in the same book. You ain't even got to go too far. OK, I want you to be introduced through to um, this is Apostle Paul and he is introducing marriage and I love the way New Living Translation breaks it down because like myself I have to go back and forth to King James Version just to make sure that it's in line and it's in flow of the same of the same awareness that I should be getting from it but I love how New Living Translation makes it seem as if that you know we don't really have to get married if we don't have these um, lustful things in us that makes us want to have sex all the time like you know the only way to keep us safe when we can't control our sexual desires is marriage and that is clearly what he is saying. And I want you to just dive into that. And I would love to hear y'all's, you know, feedback as y'all dive into these different scriptures from this discussion, just so you can find your placement. And so when you go back to God, you can really mean it with your whole heart that you don't want to live a life like this anymore. The next one I want to take to you to is also in 1 Corinthians and it is also in the 6th chapter where I read verses 9 and 10. Well, right after that in verse 11 and just finish off the chapter, it is literally talking about, you know, the sexual sin itself. And it goes into more in depth and I just brought that up here as well. It's somewhere on the screen. I have that scripture up there for you. But however, please get your Bible and start reading. Get it in there and get your understanding ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to show you what you need to see so there is no misinterpretation of what God is trying to say to you God is not the author of confusion and he is pouring out the wisdom that you need so you can make it to heaven 
I also want to talk about here um, Hebrews 13 and 4. It talks about fornication um, habits will also spill into marriage. Um, I have both sides of that. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm just going to talk about mine. So mine is, you know, now I've been affected of the reality of sex that now I learned what God says it for. And I'm so like, um, let me say that I'm working through a placement of my life of this where I don't want it to be manipulated for me. And I don't want nobody to do that, not even my husband. And so I have to get in my mind and I have to really just see see the reality for what it is just to kind of get myself into that placement to say I want to make love to my husband because let me tell you when you have lived the life that I'm I've lived and I, I mean I will be here all day just trying to break that down to you all but however y'all gonna get that information because I really want that detail to come out of how deep this runs for me you know what I'm saying? And I know I'm not alone, but I do know that I'm willing to speak about it because it has damaged my mind. And it takes it's taken me a lot of work to get to a, the reality that God wants me to see this. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm in the most safest place that I guess I could be, you know, in marriage where, you know, even if I, I have to indulge in it in such a way, you know, I guess, you know, I just, again, my mind is just not there like that anymore. But however, you know, making love to my husband can sometimes be a task for me. And, and it shouldn't be seen as a task because... God is telling us that we should be able to give ourselves over to our husband. But we don't know what traps we're setting ourselves up for because we want to dismiss truth. And then we get into marriages and now we want to know what this purity looks like. We want to know what God was really saying. We want to see it from his point of view. And now it's even more harder because now we got to combat all of these other emotions and the things that are attached to those emotions that keep bringing it back up. But deliverance is at hand, you know, and I spoke about one of my deliverance on another series I did. I think it was the COTC. And I thank God I no longer have the flashes of, of images. Those have stopped for me. But let me tell you, the enemy brought a new one. You know, and so again, this is, I, I want to be very transparent so I can really express that what comes, because if you don't know that, then you just feel like, oh, I'm going to be all right. And you could probably be worse. And I don't want that for you. I want to go ahead and tap into Titus really quick. Um, I have this on the screen as well. That is, um, I think I have um, the first chapter. And I think I have 15 written here. But I, I also added in 16. Because it just literally just kind of talks about. But I really want to and, and go ahead and just encourage you to read from verses 1 to 15 even the more. Because he, God begins to talk talk about pastors and, their, and, their, and how they should be, you know, chosen into this placement to speak this type of truth. And the purity of of why they have to be this way so they can give God's doctrine, you know what I'm saying? And speak it in such a way where they can help others. And so, and it goes into where those who are have a defiled heart, those who are unbelievers and those who are just literally corrupted in their mind, they're not going to see the purity that God was trying to create in the beginning because they have indulged in it so much and gotten away with it, if you will, you know, that it just now is comfortable and I'll be all right and I'll get to where you at one day, you know, but what if that one day doesn't come? And that's the reason why God has really put this heavy on my heart to just bring this awareness. So if you find your yourself in any of these placements or you get into this word and you begin to really get that understanding, like, wow, like I am doing something that God hates. I mean, he completely hates. It separates us from him. And we wonder what is blocking our blessings and stuff like that. This is where it's at. And this is a moment that if you recognize that and you really understand this and you comprehend what I'm talking about, this is a placement for you to go and repent. You go to God and you ask Jesus, say, hey, Lord, I want you to come into my heart because I keep sinning and I need your direction. I need your help. So come into my life and be my personal savior. You understand what I'm saying? Because your sins are on the cross with him already. But now you just have to accept it in your heart so you can move forward we're not doing these things anymore so i hope y'all enjoyed this video um i know i'm a little bit on a on a on a like a mellow side because i really think these this is some serious topics that i'm talking about here it's very very important that i that this true message just comes across as this that is 
as it's just coming out of the, the Bible, you know, and I'm just bringing different illustrations for myself, for my own experiences and how this deliverance works. And even the more how hard it is because, you know, I indulged in it for so long, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping to catch someone who hasn't gotten so deep or maybe someone who hasn't even started or I'm maybe meeting someone right here with this word that may be thinking about losing their virginity to their boyfriend who they're going to marry in two weeks. Wait, wait until the moment. Wait until the moment. I know you're going to get married. I know it's only two weeks away. I don't know where I could be meeting you at. But I do know that God wants us to live righteously. And like myself, and I know like many other believers, that we are imperfect people trying to live a righteous life. But we have to keep trying every single day. So I hope you enjoy this awareness, this discussion. Please comment down below. Remember that there are those who will watch this video and jump into the comment section as well. I do it. So I'm just saying, like, if you got something on your heart that you feel like you want to share, hey, share it. Not only just for me, because I like to be encouraged too. I love to hear, you know, how others experience this as well, you know, because this can hit our lives in such a ways where we're just not ready for it. And I'm just hoping that I am bringing that awareness to you in a different way where you will go ahead and turn away from your wicked ways and do what you got to do so you can inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, I love you. God loves you most. Okay. And he's going to do whatever he got to do to get to you because he cares about you. You deserve the kingdom of God. You deserve not to go to hell and, and grit and gnashes of your teeth of agony and pain. You don't deserve it. You don't. And the enemy wants to feed us lies so we can continue to do these things thinking we're okay. And we're not. I want you to live the abundant life that God promised us. But we have to be in him to get it. All right. Until the next time, be blessed. Stay kept by the Lord. Continue to keep on trying every single day. No one is going to meet perfection. It was only Jesus who was sinless. All right. So just know that God just wants to see that you are truly trying to turn away from something that you know that he does not like. Peace.